As you guys have probably noticed now with past podcast episodes, I like to talk about the holidays and just kind of getting you guys prepared for what can come of situations uh, that your dog could get put into and give you some tips on how to manage or deal with certain situations as they might come up. So Thanksgiving's no different. Let's jump into it next. All right, let's get this episode rolling. Welcome, everybody, to the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast. I am your host, Jake, from OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. If you check out our website, we are now uh, posting up a couple different courses. We have our main course right now, which is called Welcome Home. This is for anybody who's getting a new dog or puppy or just got a new dog or puppy and are looking to get things rolling with training, with setting up their house, with their care team. All of that is in this course. It has got over six hours of videos. It's got PDFs for you guys to check out. You get it for one year and you get free access to, for that one year to our non-Facebook uh, community. So you can jump in there, you can ask questions, you can brag, and the community as a whole is there to help you and give you advice and just kind of help people just kind of work together because that's what I feel like is really important is if we're all just kind of working together, we've got the trainers in there talking, we've got the participants in there talking. I mean, it's just all a really good kind of mesh of communication and tips and advice. So check out that course. Now, as not only do we have that course available, but we actually took a portion of that course um, called Setting Up Your Care Team. This is a chapter in that course, and we are offering that as a, as a mini course for you guys to be able to at least get your care team set up. Now, people kind of overlook this, we feel, at times, and there's so many different things that go into it. So you guys can go to ondogtrainingacademy.com, and you can click on our courses, and you'll be able to see both courses there. There are our first two courses that we have available. Of course, we have more to come, but that's what we got going for now. So check out ondogtrainingacademy.com. If neither of those courses interest you, but you're still interested in what we have to offer, click that subscribe button at the top right-hand side on the website, and we will put you into our email list and update you on anything new, fun, and cool that happens to be popping up. So keep that stuff in mind, guys. Also, you can go to our Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast uh, page on Facebook. I will link that along with our website along with all the other links that are needed in the description of this podcast. So check that out. I love getting feedback and I love getting tips or or suggestions for topics um, that people want me to cover. I've done a couple different ones that some some, uh, listeners have requested, barking, um, in-house dog fighting, a couple different things like that. So definitely get on there. Tell me what you'd like for me to talk about and I will do my best to cover it. I want to produce what you guys want to hear. If I'm only producing what I want to talk about, well, it's great for me, but it's not as great for you guys. So definitely let me know what topics interest you. If I haven't covered them or if I've already covered them, but you have questions to them, I can always do additional subjects or additional build-ons or add-ons to previous episodes. And I will be doing that. Um, probably every year. So definitely let me know what you guys want to hear. All right, enough of that. Let's dive into this week's episode. Like I mentioned, I did this for 4th of July. I did this for Halloween. And now I'm going to go ahead and do an episode for Thanksgiving. The reason I like to do this one is because there's a lot of stuff that can happen. These are big get together holidays. And there's things that can happen and things we need to consider with our dogs. Um, that maybe we overlook because of all the planning for the holiday, because of all the the preparation and everything we're trying to do, sometimes we forget about our dog. So I'm here to remind you, don't forget about your dog. Make sure that you are prepared and ready to go. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. The big thing I think when it comes to Thanksgiving is management. We have to be able to manage our dog. Now, if you're going to somebody's house and your dog is staying home, 
Well, then we need to make sure we're not having our dog away for too long. I definitely suggest crating your dog, and that is going to be an episode covered here in a, in a very near future podcast, possibly even next week. Next, next week, Not sure yet, but kenneling your dog I think is a really good idea. You can. They might be full by now because we are about a week out. We are exactly a week out. You can maybe reach out to a boarding facility, your boarding facility if you already have one, or something to see if they have room, if it's going to be a really long day, but being prepared. So if you're leaving, that your dog has somewhere to be. Now, if you're just now going, oh, crap, we forgot about the dog, you may be too late to get into a facility. Um, This is something to keep in mind for next year. Facilities fill up really fast, and so we need to make sure that we're prepared months in advance like we have clients that'll contact us saying hey we need to we need our dog taken care of from you know for thanksgiving and we're two months out still and that's perfect like let us know <clears throat> as soon as you can because then you're, you're going to be able to get the vaccinations that are required do a fecal if that's required um and just be ready to go and not be last minute rushing and all that and if anybody is, has tried to take their dogs to the vet lately it's a little bit tough It's tough for scheduling and stuff, so make sure you are on top of this stuff. Make sure you're keeping your dog up to date for vaccinations so that if you're taking your dog with you or you're bringing your dog to a boarding place, they will be safe. So that's tip number one. Make sure you're managing if your dog's going to be home. When's your dog going to be able to be fed, pottied, all of that? Really important thing. Now, if you're going to bring your dog with or you're having Thanksgiving at your home, these are the big things that we need to talk about. And, and, and it's all management again, of course it's all management, but we need to talk about this stuff. The first thing is, is what are you going to do with your dog when people are coming over and people are over? What are you going to do with your dog? Are you going to just let them have a free for all and just be able to run around all the time? I don't recommend that, but is that your plan? Or are you going to be able to close your dog in another room, maybe put them you know, somewhere quiet in a way, like what is your plan? You need to have a plan. My suggestion for this is mix it. Do a mix. Don't let your dog be free all the time. We'll explain that in a second. But don't let your dog be free all the time. <clears throat> kind of cycle them. Say, you know what, I'm going to let you be out for a half an hour or whatever. Socialize with people. If the dog is naughty, have them on leash. If the dog has got behavior issues, maybe this isn't even an option at all. But have them on leash, go around and visit, making sure that the dog's not jumping, nothing like that. And then after about a half hour or so, say, all right, buddy, it's break time. And you're going to put them back in their kennel or in another room or whatever. I recommend, again, a kennel. It's a safety thing. Um, and they get the break for a couple hours. You know, they can sleep, they can rest, whatever. And then you do it all again. They don't have to be constantly involved. They can just have some rest time. That is perfectly fine, but we need to we need to make sure that that we're kind of uh, balancing it out. There should be some sort of balance there between rest and activity. Um, so that timeout is going to be very 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 important. Now, exposure to people again. This depends on your dog. So we want to manage our exposure to other people, and that's going to jump into my next topic here mostly. Um, but if your dog is have bad behavior issues even if it's if the dog's bitey jumping if the dog's aggressive or shy or or whatever it might be this is not necessarily a time because you're probably very distracted this isn't necessarily a time where you're going to be able to actively work on things constantly again that goes back to taking breaks with your dog work with your dog put your dog away work with your dog put your dog away Um, but at the same time i don't trust people coming over to be able to appropriately interact with my dog meaning they might allow jumping. They might allow biting. They might encourage those things. They might get the dog excited. I have certain people in my family who my dog gets so jacked up excited for that I'm really careful on being able to watch them, at least initially, when my dog goes and sees them because it's just something about their energy, the way they act, whatever, that really gets my dog jacked up and... He's, he's typically a really good dog, but he could jump because of this. He could maybe put his teeth on them, not aggressively, but just even playing or getting overly excited. Um, so if you, fi- if you have people like that in your family, that's the management part of it. The other thing, and this is, the, this is a big one, 
is people giving your dog food. Now, I have come to realize, now, I've always thought that there are certain foods, and I think most people think this or, or, or assume this as well. There are certain foods that, as people, we just know dogs shouldn't have. But I think, I've, I guess I've, I've talked to people and I've realized it's not as obvious as I thought. And so I really want to make sure my dog, or your dog in this case, is not getting that inappropriate food that could potentially be super dangerous or toxic to your dog. And we're just going to go through uh, a bunch of them here. I'm going to talk to you about some foods that you might not think about, but we'll talk about some foods that maybe they sh- they just shouldn't have. I, I, to be honest, they just shouldn't have it. And we're going to start with the big one. We're going to talk about the turkey. Now, I'm not talking about turkey meat. We'll get into that in a second. I'm talking about turkey bones, turkey skin, and that oh-so-yummy gravy that comes from the turkey drippings. All of those turkey bones, when they're co- turkey... Raw turkey is fine for dogs. Uh, raw, you know, like like uh, uh, bird bones and stuff are hollow and they flex and stuff. And so dogs can eat those and chew them down. But when they are cooked, they dry out and they can become very slivery. Meaning a dog could eat a turkey bone and get it lodged, jammed, slivered up into their gums. Something really bad can happen there. So we definitely don't. I don't give my dog cooked bones ever, period. Steak bones, turkey, doesn't matter. None of it. Um... And so that's something to keep in mind. Now, the skin, is the skin going to be fatal to a dog? No. The only issue I have with the dog, with the skin, the two issues I have with the skin is what seasonings did you put on this? Because there are certain things, salts, garlics, things like that, that may not be great when it comes to the health of your dog. But more importantly, the fat. Now, dogs' food has fat in it, of course. But unless your dog is used to getting highly fatty foods if you give your dog turkey skin or anything or i'm gonna even tie in gravy into this because gravy is high in sodium typically and tons of fat so if you give your dog that you run a very high risk of having to wake up in the middle of the night because either a your dog pooped i was gonna say something else all over the all over its kennel or the floor or your dog is screaming because they're about to explode and so you want to make sure you're not overdoing this. And if one person does it, then another will do it, and another will do it. I just would rather manage it and say, nobody feed my dog anything, because if they poop, I will mail you what they did. You can deal with it. Well, that just sounds gross. The next one is stuffing. Stuffing, and, and we're going to actually talk about like breads and stuff here, but stuffing, I don't like giving my dog anything with, with breads, yeasts, anything like that. Also, with the... Um, celery isn't great for dogs and so surprisingly and so that is something that's obviously in stuffing and then the seasoning salt and fat same with casseroles casseroles have a lot of fat in them i just stay away from from that your creamed peas your creamed peas you know regular peas and again we'll talk about this in a second regular peas are fine for dogs we'll be right back Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And And you are are listening to Music Music Elixir, Elixir, a podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. But your cream peas, you're putting in things, possibly dairy. I guess I've never made cream peas. But there's dairy, there's possible dairy, there's butter, there's added fats, there's all these things. No bueno. Like that is just, it's going to lead to problems. Um, The next one is a giant one. We're talking chocolates, cookies, pies, sweets, anything, especially anything containing xylitol. So like we've talked about xylitol and like sugar-free gums and stuff. But you'd be surprised. This stuff can show up in, in, in different types of chocolates and cookies and pies. A lot of different sweets because it is kind of a sweet substitute. So... Or something like that. So you want to make sure you're if you're going to give your dog anything, read the either give them something completely natural and just normal, or if you're going to give them something, read the ingredients. I just avoid giving them anything that has a big list of ingredients because if I make just one mistake, it can be bad. But your chocolate, that's obvious. Cookies, I mean, it should be obvious. Don't give your dog cookies. Lots of sugar, lots of fat, lots of calories. 
Um, pies, again, should be pretty obvious. Uh, any sort of sweets should be obvious. We're not trying to create... I mean, we leave Thanksgiving really fat and happy, but that's not our goal of our dog, necessarily. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. The next one, then, is alcoholic beverages. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have a little, you know, nightcap or a little something at the end, you know, coffee, brandy, whatever, to kind of end the night. Your dog does not need to partake in that celebration or that part of Thanksgiving. Definitely watch that. Don't let them get alcohol. You don't need a dog who's drunk. It can be bad. It can be obviously dangerous to them. And so just remember that. Raisins and grapes. So I don't know. I guess I don't really see raisins and grapes. Um, I am, by the way, guys, I am reading a list um, just because I wanted a reference. I, I'm reading a list off of the American Kennel Club's website of of foods that aren't good for Thanksgiving. So you can definitely search this out and find this list that I'm going over to kind of reference back to it. Raisins and grapes, I mean, they are toxic to a dog. They will crush a dog's kidneys, I believe. And and it's just not a healthy thing for them to do. Again, I don't really know of a lot of Thanksgiving meals that have grapes, maybe raisins, maybe. But still, it's something to be aware of. Onion. The next one is onions, scallions, and garlic. Those are things that are just not great for dogs, so try to avoid them. Ham, I think with ham, so like pork is, is good for dogs. Ham, you're looking at, at when you brine it, you're brining it in salt. So when you're brining this ham in salt, you're giving, you're, obviously ham is a super salty food. It's not the best for us. I mean, it tastes amazing, but it's not the best for us. But you want to make sure you're not giving it to your dog, as tempting as it might be, just because of the added sodium and everything to it. And the ham bone itself, again, it's a cooked bone, leave it alone. Ooh, that rhyme? Ooh, I think I just rhymed. If it's a ham bone, leave it alone. There we go. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt. No one will buy it. All right, so the next one then is yeasty doughs. Your breads, anything like that. I don't like them. Um, it's not good for dogs in general. It can go into their stomach, expand. It can do a lot of different stuff. Avoid breads. Don't give your dogs breads. This list then says fatty foods. We've covered all of that because basically everything that I read over is fatty. And we, again, we're not trying to create fat dogs and it's not even that you could say, well, I'm gonna let my dog splurge for one day and it'll be fine. It's not even about the weight gain for this one day. It's more about introducing a ton of fat to a dog that can greatly affect their pancreas or it can just lead to diarrhea and a tire, an, an entire gross mess of crap to deal with, pun intended. Um, so keep that in mind. The last one then is foods containing spices. I just, we talked about that with, the, with some of the stuffings, casseroles and things like that. It's just some good ideas of things to avoid. So this wraps all back up into why I think it's so important that we manage our dogs during Thanksgiving. I'm not worried about you guys necessarily giving your dog the dogs this list of things they shouldn't have. I'm worried about Uncle Joe or Aunt Cindy or whatever, or Grandma and Grandpa or the kids or whatever. I'm more worried about them giving your dog these things, slipping a little bit of food under the table. They're eating a little appetizer. Give a little bit to your dog because it's sitting there looking cute. And, oh, well, I just couldn't, you know, say no to those eyes. Yeah, well, we just need to make sure we're managing this. So as much of a burden as it is, manage your dogs. Put them away so that you can have your free time, your free time with family and whatever, and man- and do cooking and stuff, whatever it is you're doing. But when you have them out, have them on leash or at the very least be with them and manage them and try to stay like that. You're, when the dog is out, the dog is your focus. And it's hard. It is absolutely hard. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about some things because I don't want to end on all just don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. We're going to talk about a few things that your dog can have for Thanksgiving so you can share in the festivities with your dog. The first one is apples. Now, I'm not talking about apple pie. We talked about that before. No apple pie. But you know what? If you're making apple pie, save your dog a couple chunks of apple. Apples are great. They got vitamins A and C, and they have really good fiber in it. And it's just health. It's a healthy treat in general, like year-round for your dog. Like in the fall when we do apple picking and stuff, we go to the orchard. We do all this stuff. It's super fun. And we come home, and we're cutting up apples, and we're making you know frozen pies, whatever. We're always giving our dogs little bits of it. I know like with Luda... When he hears me crunch into an apple, 
he comes flying over because thanks to our basset hound before him, Copper, he learned that crunch of crunch means apple. Apple means the dad's going to give us some because it's good for us and we'll just stare at him and make him feel bad. I am a bit of a pushover when it comes to giving my dog things that are healthy. I'm like, well, what's it hurt? I know it creates begging, but that's that's my problem. The next one then is turkey. So you can you can give your dog turkey. However, like we mentioned before, no bones, no skin. Nice, pure turkey. Nothing that's been um, injected with anything. Just normal turkey. It's okay to give your dog some of that. It is totally fine. Green beans is the same thing. Dogs love, cooked or not, dogs love green beans. A lot of them do. I think they prefer the the cooked because it's a little easier to eat. The raw ones tend to be a little more crunchy and a little bit harder, but some dogs just don't give a rip and they will just eat whatever. So green beans are definitely a good option uh, to do. You're just wanting to not do those those, uh, creamed beans or peas or whatever it was I said just because you're adding a lot of ingredients. So save some of those green beans, put them aside for your dog and be like, yeah, we're going to give you this. Um, Plain peas. Plain peas are a fine choice. Um, Again, we don't want that cream peas. Cream peas just sounds weird. I'm sure people eat it and probably will say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's delicious. I mean, I do like cream corn, so, you know. And, you know, surprisingly, corn wasn't ever mentioned on this. Do people just not eat corn? Because, I mean, I, I feel like I have corn for Thanksgiving, but I don't. Either way, I don't suggest corn, whether it's cooked, not cooked, creamed, not creamed. Just don't give your dog corn. I'm not a huge corn supporter in general. Um, not that it's terrible for the dogs. It's just not great. So I just kind of avoid it. Um, the next one, which I actually think is a really good one, is pumpkin. So we grow our own pumpkins here at our place specific, specifically for making pies and feeding our dogs. P- pumpkin is a amazing um, thing for their digestive health. It's got awesome fiber in it. Um so if you do, have if your dog's been getting table scraps, slip them a little pumpkin. This might help firm them up. Um, this is pure pumpkin. This isn't pumpkin pie filling. This isn't. I'm not giving my dog any sort of pie again. Like I've mentioned, um, it, it's just it's just uh, trying to make sure that it's just pure pumpkin, healthy. It's something you could actually add into your dog's food regularly to make them feel fuller more, especially if you're trying to have them lose weight. Um, and it's just a healthy thing for them. So pumpkin, definitely an option. Just cook it down. Just cook pumpkin. Like we we cook pumpkins like you'd cook squash in an oven. And then we just mush it down and freeze it. And there we go. We got our dog. So not that it's Halloween, but if you got any pumpkins left, especially whole pumpkins, cut them in half, de-seed them. You could eat those seeds and then jump, put them in the oven, mush them down, and then chunk them, you know, put them in the freezer and your dog can eat them. Uh, or you can eat them as well. Putting them in a food processor is nice because it turns it into that mush, that pumpkin filling kind of mush. Um, but either way, it's very squashy tasting, so it's good. Okay, back to the subjects at hand. The last one is dessert. So if you want to give your dog, if you're having dessert, if you're having Thanksgiving, you want your dog to have some sort of dessert, look for a dessert that's a little bit better, like frozen yogurt. Uh, yogurt's good. Plain yogurt, sugar f- without heavy sugars in it. Those are all good. They've got proteins. They've got uh, probiotics in it. They've got the live bacteria or, you know, all that. And, and it's just really good nutrient-wise for your dog to have. The the last one, and I don't see it on here, which is really... Oh, there we go. There is one on here. I just happened to miss it. The last one we'll mention is sweet potatoes. Now, I'm not talking about candy, candy DMs, whatever. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about regular sweet potatoes. Again, we're trying to avoid added sodiums. We're trying to avoid added seasonings, things like that. So your sweet potatoes... A great option. Again, another really good year-round option for your dog. It's got your fiber in it. It's got vitamin B6, vitamin Cs, beta carotene. I mean, sweet potatoes are fantastic for people, and they're really, really, really good for dogs as well. So it might be something you just want to incorporate into like a daily diet for them. They won't complain. They'll love you for it because it's good, and most dogs actually like it. So definitely consider that as an option as well. So guys, that is the whole big laundry list of things to keep in mind for Thanksgiving. Managing your dog, making sure they're they're being appropriate around people, not jumping, not doing any begging, stuff like that. Put them away when necessary to give them a break and yourself a break as well. And then watch the kind of foods they're getting. Make sure, I would just tell people don't feed my dog and just make that a very clear rule. 
Um, hell, you could even put a, a, a collar or a vest or something on your dog that says, don't feed me. And then put the person's name on it who you know is going to be guilty doing it. Grandpa. You know, something like that. So definitely keep these things in mind. Like I said, if you're looking for this full list that I was just talking about, the American Kennel Club has this on their website. Obviously, it's free. You can check it out. It goes more into detail on why things are bad and why things are good. We've talked about most of it, but you can get that list from their website. You could just Google search uh, foods my that foods my dog can have on Thanksgiving or dangerous foods, whatever, and you'll get a big list of stuff. So definitely keep all this stuff in mind. Manage your dogs. Keep them healthy. Keep them safe. And guys, if you have any questions or anything, Go to our Learn, Laugh, Bark Facebook page. Post something on there. Ask a question. I'm willing to help you guys. I want everyone to enjoy this podcast, to learn stuff, and to keep their dogs safe, happy, and healthy. And so if you're celebrating it, guys, have an awesome Thanksgiving. And hopefully your dogs will have an awesome Thanksgiving too, since we did kind of mention some foods they can have. And just enjoy this time. So thank you guys. And like every week, we'll see you in the next episode.